Well, hello there, guys, and welcome back to a video that I've kind of wanted to make for a while now. Uh, I've actually had this idea in mind, and about four weeks ago, it actually got requested as well by Supersonic53. And today we're going to be doing a video on Windows XP Starter Edition, not necessarily a, a whole in-depth Windows tutorial like we usually do with these builds, but I just want to uh, take you through this uh, particular version of Windows XP because this is a very interesting version of uh, Windows XP, and I'm sure most people haven't really heard about this. Now, I'm sure you've probably heard of Windows 7 Starter, maybe even Windows Vista Starter, but not many people have heard of Windows XP Starter, and the reason for that is, is uh, this, this version of Windows was actually a low-cost version of Windows XP Home Edition that was intended to come out uh, in developing markets, you know, like places like Thailand, Vietnam, Turkey, and India, places like that, that, you know, people there didn't really have enough money to buy a full-fledged copy of, of uh, Windows XP Home. So Microsoft introduced this as sort of a cheaper option for those people to get um, the same sort of features that Windows XP Home would have but kind of you know being a lot cheaper obviously so I'm just gonna kinda take you through this build I've already set up uh, a you know a standard virtual machine here and we're just gonna go through uh, the installation process I'm probably gonna cut out a lot of things because I think this is gonna be mostly or very similar to the Windows XP Home Edition uh, installation process as it kinda starts off here and as you'll see in a minute it actually identifies itself as Windows XP Home Edition in the top left here which is Kind of interesting, I guess they didn't really change that, but yeah, you can see here Windows XP Home Edition setup. So uh, we're just going to press enter and I'm just going to kind of go through uh, with the uh, installation process. Now you'll see here it, uh, it actually does identify itself at this point in the, the EULA or the End User License Agreement as XP Starter Edition. So we're just going to press F8, we're going to install it on the unpartitioned space, and we'll do a quick format with NTFS. Now I know I'm going a little bit fast, but I, I, I kind of want to get past the whole installation, as I don't really think it's going to be that interesting. It's probably going to be, like I said, very similar to a Windows XP Home or Professional, or even Server 2003. Um, but I'm not really sure, I haven't even checked uh, what the installation looks like on this. But I want to show you kind of what features um, are very interesting about this build and or not about this build but about this release of Windows and what kind of makes it interesting and really different from any other version of Windows XP out there. Now this is an official version. A lot of people that have heard of this have thought like it's a you know fake version that somebody just made but no this is actually a real version of Windows XP that, like I said, was a uh, essentially a low-cost version of XP that was intended uh, for those developing markets. And obviously there's places more than Thailand, Vietnam, Turkey, and India that are uh, considered developing markets, but uh, those are just the four, or just, you know, four that I got uh, from, like, the uh, actual wiki page. But um, I'm just going to pause the video here where it says setup is copying files, and I'm going to, you know, probably come back once we get to the next portion of the installation so I'll see you guys in a little bit all right so as I pretty much predicted this is literally the exact uh, same process for uh, this whole installation part here as Windows XP Home Edition you'll notice it even says Windows XP Home Edition sports a visual design that combines a you know blah blah, blah all this stuff but yeah it, it is saying Windows XP Home Edition so they didn't really make many changes to the actual installation but um, I'm probably just going to pause the video here and uh, let this you know go through because there's not really that much to see here. If you guys want to see what this process looks like, um, I do have a Windows Server 2003 installation video and it's pretty much the exact same thing. And I've gotten for some reason a lot of you guys wanting me to do uh, like uh, tutorials on Windows XP Home and Windows XP Pro. But really the reason why that I haven't been doing them is because this whole process is literally the exact same thing as Server 2003. There's not really that you know, like huge visual changes, so that's why that I uh, kind of stayed away from doing those. But this version right here, um, yeah, I know that the whole uh, installation isn't really that interesting. But uh, once we get into the actual OS, there's going to be some very very interesting things that I want to talk about. So yeah, I'm just going to pause the video here, and I'll see you guys in hopefully less than 36 minutes. Okay, so we did run into a bit of an issue when I actually had to, or when it actually prompted me to enter uh, the product key, 
as I actually didn't have one. So what I actually had to do is go online and find a different ISO. So we're actually using a uh, service pack three now, which I was uh, using the ISO for uh, service pack two before. And I'm gonna have this link down below, by the way. I don't think that I mentioned that before, but I'm gonna have a, a download link. And uh, now all we have to do is just, uh, you know, click on next and then it, we say, no, we don't wanna enter any product key. And then it'll just, you know, let us finish the, or, or you know, let us kind of bypass that step. So if you are um, going to be installing this in uh, a virtual machine or on a real computer, and you just want to you know, test it out, as that's what I'm sure most of you would be doing with this, um, just download the version that I'll have down below, and you don't have to put in a, a product key. Again, you're only gonna get a 30-day trial, but you know, it's still something to uh, test it out. So we're just gonna name it XP Starter, and we'll set yeah we'll be in the you know pacific time zone or whatever and i think that's pretty much it for now again i'm just going to pause the video and i'll be back uh once we are finished it's going to be about 32 minutes so uh, hopefully it'll be less than that like i said before but uh, i'll see you guys then so just thought i would mention that this here this, this is actually something that windows xp normally doesn't do it that never brings up this thing where it says copying files and it shows the actual copying of the files to the windows folder it hasn't done this in XP Home or XP Professional. So I guess this is something uh, since they like kind of ha have like stripped down a lot of the things in this version, I guess that they like that shows for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but uh, yeah, so that's probably one of the only interesting things about uh, this whole set of process. Um, we are going pretty fast. I don't think that's going to be, or I, I think that's going to be the last of. Uh, the you know interesting things so uh yeah i guess i'm just gonna pause the video again like i said for the past uh two times now and uh i'll see you guys in a little bit all right so we are back um i'm not actually sure how long that um the rest of this setup took because i actually went out uh, to run some errands while uh i was or like while uh, the, you know the whole setup was still going on but uh we're, we're here with this very large mouse cursor and it says uh, that, that it's going to adjust the screen resolution. So we're going to click OK, and we'll click OK again. And yeah, now you'll see it says Microsoft Windows XP Starter, Starter Edition. I'm not really sure why that the uh, cursor is so large. You'll also see that the copyright date is now 2004. So I'm guessing that's when this came out, was in uh, 2004. Um, so it looks like we're, we're going to get the same Windows XP out of box experience here. Um, it just with a very large mouse cursor so now you'll see in here it says welcome to microsoft windows xp starter edition the most economical version of windows xp which is designed specifically to introduce you to personal computing windows xp, windows xp starter edition contains many of the same great features and other versions of windows the standard windows user interface enhanced security settings to help you to help protect your computer and meaningful support materials that help solve problems and, and answer questions and it kind of tells you a bit of what you can do because yeah i guess that's kind of what this was meant for was um people that didn't really uh know a lot a lot about computers and wanted a cheap way to get into it um we're just going to skip the whole uh internet registration thing well no remind me every few days because it's not we don't have a like an actual product key put in here obviously like i said before so um so yeah, here we are, it is now loading our personal settings. And here we are on the Windows XP Starter Edition desktop. You can probably already see there's a few little differences. Um, for example, the you know whole logo is up here on, on the start menu instead of, it's like usually on the side in um, a normal Windows XP when you're using uh, the classic start menu. Uh, the cursor is really large for whatever reason, but uh, I'll get into all this. Uh, later as we go on but um, yeah so let me just pull up my little list here of things that were kind of in interesting about this so yeah as I mentioned before this was a low-cost version of Windows XP Home it was based on Windows XP Home but it was designed for uh, developing markets in places like Thailand and India you know things like that like I mentioned before um, and to do this they kind of have like a lot of limitations put on the actual operating system so you're going to notice, let's just go through some of these things. Um, we'll go into uh, the properties here. You'll see that there's no um, other wallpapers. I believe that you can change uh, your wallpaper, which is, very, which is very interesting because in Windows 7 Starter, there was no way to do that. So I, I don't really know why they took that feature out. Um, but if we go over to settings, you'll see that um, the maximum resolution 
is I think if we try to go to this uh, resolution, actually it will let us. That's really strange. It says that the max resolution is 1024 by 768, but it's letting us go to 2048 by 1536. So. Um, I guess that's wrong. Let's just go to 1080p here, and I'll make this full screen. I didn't think I was going to be able to do this. Um, so apparently that's wrong um, about that, uh, uh, the max resolution. Maybe that's because we're in a, a virtual machine. Um, also, one of the interesting things is the RAM is actually, like, you can only have a maximum of 512 megabytes of RAM, and a maximum size, uh, like, your, the maximum size of your hard disk can only be 120 gigs. And I think the reason for this was was to make sure that it was only going to get used on lower end uh, uh, machines, so that you know if you had a higher end computer, you wouldn't be buying this and you know get, getting yourself into the wrong version of Windows. I guess um, it, this actually only works on a Pentium three processor if you're doing this on a real computer. Now I'm doing it in a VM, so it's able to you know emulate that correctly. If you're doing this on a real computer, it would have to be a Pentium three. Um, or at least I think that it's uh, a Pentium 3, and I'm, I'm guessing that's for the same reason, to make sure that it's only used on you know, really low-end machines. Um, so yeah, you can kind of think of this like Windows Fundamentals for Legacy PCs, which I did a video on a while ago, except it's with a lot more, like it kind of locks you down a lot. Um, one of the very interesting things is that there's actually a limit to how many windows you can have open on uh, the, like, the actual computer. So we're gonna go, let's just say we wanna open up, um, I don't know, we'll say, uh, we'll open up Internet Explorer here. And saying that we don't have an internet connection, we'll just, I guess, view the ISP something. Internet sign up, okay, whatever. So yeah, we have uh, Internet Explorer open. Go and uh, open up Windows Media Player here. And we'll, we'll do that, and then we'll also open up Solitaire. So now we have three, three applications open on the computer. So when we go to open up, let's say run, you'll see that it says with Windows XP Starter Edition, you can run three programs at the same time. To open any other program, save your work and close one of the open programs and try again. So kind of interesting how they kind of limit you to opening th only three applications. I don't want to create a shortcut. Um, so yeah, let's say that you wanted to you know, open up, let's say your email client, you would have to close one of these applications, go in here, and then open up your email, and then it will let you do that. So, I think the reason they did this was to make it so that new users wouldn't overwhelm themselves with all these windows open. I, I'm guessing that's really that's, that's really the only reason I can think of. Or they thought that the hardware they were making it for, like you know, Pentium three based things, could only support three windows open at one time. Um, but the same also applies as like each application can only have three. I, I, I guess instances of that application or like three windows so you can only have three programs open but within those three programs you can have three windows so to kind of show you what I mean let's say we want to open up a new window in Internet Explorer here so we'll open up a new window open up another window and then we'll try to open up another one and you'll see we get the same thing you can have three windows open within each program that you are running. To open another window, save your work and close one of the open windows. So the same thing. Now we can still, you know, go into solitaire. Like we still have, because this is one app right here. Like this is one, you know, program. But if we go into solitaire, and I guess let's say we open up the options. I, I guess you can't open up three things in solitaire. But we, so we'll just leave that open. We'll open up, uh, I don't know, Windows Explorer. And then we'll say we'll open up another window in uh, Windows Explorer. Let's say we want to actually, okay, that was kind of interesting. When I tried to uh, right click on the C drive, it gave me that same thing. That's kind of interesting. Um, so let's say we want, see, look, it's like doing the same thing. Whenever I, I like right click on it, it does that. But anyway, well, let's say we want to, um, how, how do we open stuff in new view? No, you know, <laughs> tools. How do you view stuff in a new window? But yeah, essentially you can only have a limit of three windows for each program, and you have a limit of three programs running on the computer. So yeah, kind of annoying, probably something that you wouldn't want to use if you're using your computer all the time, or if you're using this for more than just like browsing the web and stuff. Um, and you know, one of, the, one of the other things that it did is it actually would uh, change the uh, interface sort of depending on what region you were in. So I believe that this ISO is 
um, like a multi-purpose region ISO, like it's not uh, specifically locked to one region. But if we were to have, say, a uh, Windows XP ISO from Thailand, it would put uh, a separate wallpaper that was uh, kind of themed to that country and, you know, kind of make users, I guess, feel more at home or, you know, feel more comfortable using it, you know, things like that. We do have the option to change the language. However, I don't think, yeah, it says the wizard cannot find any language or, or location files. So, if you have the CD-ROM, I guess it's not finding the CD-ROM. So, um, yeah, see, it's uh, defaultly in this version set to the region is the United States, the English, or the, the English is language. The language is English. Um, but no, we can't, I, I guess in here is where, no. So, I guess the CD does not have any extra... Um, languages but yeah so that's what uh, this is so that, that's why we have this uh, kind of you know generic looking wallpaper I believe you can change this though so let's say we want to go into sample pictures and make like this the wallpaper yeah so you can change the wallpaper again kind of weird how in Windows 7 sort of they, they took that ability out I thought that was kind of really odd <laughs> um, and also one of the other really annoying things that you haven't noticed is there is this little watermark down here and this is on top of everything if you put an icon here it's on top of it if we open up um, let's say getting started it's on top of it it's just here all the time there's nothing you can do to make it go away besides I guess editing the OS code which I don't know if you know many of the people or like many of the average users using this OS would know how to do so they would have to deal with that all the time so kind of annoying and yeah, the, the mouse cursor is really large. and not really sure why that is, and I don't think we can change that either. Let's just try to go into the control panel. Yeah, we don't have many options here. Appearance and themes. Oh, mouse pointers. Maybe we can change it. Let's see, pointers. Oh, actually, we can. Okay. Change it to variations. Let's do that. Okay, so you can change it. I actually didn't know that. I thought you. I thought it kept with uh, the extra large one. But yeah, that's one of the other, one of the other differences is that it it does make the extra large cursor uh, the default one. So uh, kind of odd, I guess. So I mean, really, that is essentially why Windows XP Starter Edition is is you know so interesting, I guess, for you know people that are kind of into Windows XP stuff. Um, again, I'm going to have an ISO for this down below, so if you guys want to, you know, check it out for yourself, and if you find anything interesting, bef you know, besides what I've focused on here, you know, be sure to, to, you know, let me know, I'll be, you know, I would love to read what you guys find. Um, again, that ISO is going to be down below, um, and just to kind of, uh, give you a, I guess, you know, what, you know, what kind of happened to this, and why that we don't really hear about it. Um, in late 2006, Microsoft said they actually sold 1 million copies of these, but strangely, it was still not a really large success, and the reason for that was, is, and I, I actually find this kind of funny, is that there were more people using pirated copies of Windows in those countries than people using actual licensed copies. So when people, you know, heard of Windows XP Starter and they thought it was, you know, kind of limited, they just got a pirated version of Windows XP Home or even Windows XP Professional and they got all the features and they didn't have to deal with like this watermark and you know like uh, the three window limitation and all that. There's actually, and I thought this, I found this really funny, is that some stores in these countries actually just sold pirated copies of uh, Windows XP, which is is kind of odd. I guess it, I mean, I know it's that's considered illegal here in the US, but I, maybe they don't have laws about piracy in some of those other nations. Um, but yeah, people would sell pirated copies of Windows XP for like 30 cents, I think, and people would buy them and they would just use that to, uh, you know, use their computer. So that's why this really wasn't a big success. Again, they did say they sold 1 million units, but you know, when you're talking about like a bunch of, like a bunch of different countries and selling 1 million units, I wouldn't really think that would be that great of a number, but still, you know, there was 1 million people, I guess, that used this at one point. Um, and yeah, so that's just kind of a brief history of Windows XP Starter, and well, I think that is just about going to wrap it up for this video on Windows XP Starter Edition. Now, I know that this wasn't uh, the normal tutorial style that we usually do, but I just wanted to, you know, really focus in on uh, the really unusual quirks and things like that that made this operating system really different and unique from any other version of uh, Windows XP. And again, I would like to thank uh, Supersonic53 uh, for uh, kind of 
I guess, resuggesting this as I, again, already had it uh, in, in mind before that he actually posted that comment, but you know, uh, still thank you to him. And yeah, thanks to you guys for watching, and if you guys kind of like uh, this new sort of, you know, style, I don't really think we're going to be doing this that much, uh, this was just kind of a one-time thing for this video, but if you have um, any other builds of Windows that are uh, kind of uh, unique and special like this that you want uh, to, you know, be featured on, on the channel, definitely sure to let me know down in the comments, I'd be glad to do something like that, and... Really, I think that's all that I have to say, so just thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, uh, definitely be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. And, as always, I will see you all in the next video.